fellow YouTubians, it is Kelly with BC Tactical, and as promised, I know we said last night, but he was busy in his shootout, as promised, I got my buddy Aaron Clayton, he's with Lima 3 Dynamics. How you doing, Aaron? Good, how are you? Not bad, man. So, Lima 3 Dynamics, these, these are the cats here in Arkansas that are kind of taking over the uh, tactical shooting world. They're going to teach you everything you need to know about weapons and all that stuff. So, tonight... Here in the chicken house, got a chicken house exclusive. We're going to talk about some of those weapons. So one of the things I want to talk to you about, Aaron, is uh, there's people out there think, man, I don't know what kind of gun I should get for home protection. Home protection on my little homestead, on my little corner lot. What do I need for home protection? Do I get a bazooka? Should I get uh, some kind of Iranian machine gun? What do we get, man? What, what, what do you suggest? First thing out, going to the gun store, what do you suggest? How do we know? Well, if I'm looking strictly for home defense, I'm probably going to point you in the direction of a handgun. Uh, okay. That being said, reason why is I think the first upgrade you make, whether it's a rifle, shotgun, handgun, whatever it is, is you need a light, especially for home defense. That's, okay. a, that's the difference that keeps you from shooting your kid while he's getting a drink of water in the middle of the night or a, bur a burglar. All right, so I'm going to throw out an example. This is something that we have here at my house. This is my wife's. This is my wife's homestead weapon. It's a Taurus 38 Pistola. It has the uh, the little uh, little uh, laser on it, so she can't miss. It's five shots, and it's a wheel gun. So tell us about wheel guns. What what the difference between that and an automatic is? Why you would choose? Uh, one of those. If I was going to say the biggest thing about a wheel gun is you're going to have less less options to malfunction on yourself. Uh, Semi-automatic, you're going to you could have magazine loading issues, things like that. The wheel gun, it's going to fire. Right. That, so that's if, the best thing about it is it eliminates the chances of you having malfunctions unless you just have a dud round or something like that. Now my wife can shoot. We go out, we shoot sometimes, but. As far as automatics go, uh, say semi-automatic like uh, like a Glock or something like that, like my Glock that I have, uh, you know, if she catches a stove pipe or something like that, a lot of people don't even know what a stove pipe is, but it, it's just a malfunction where the where the shell casing comes out, and sticks up, kind of like a stove pipe, and, and you have to be able to fix that on the fly. With a wheel gun, it's just hey, point shoot. Five rounds. That's what you got. All right, let's go to another handgun. You brought he brought several, so we're going to look at some, talk about some different stuff. So you got some other handguns. Uh, this is the one that stays in my bedside drawer. It's a Glock 20, 10 millimeter, with just your surefire light. So what he's telling you is, is don't hang out by his bedside. <laughs> that's that's, right. that's what he's saying. I I'm not going over there, but anyway. All right, so. The choice for you on a combat handgun, uh, there's a lot of choices out there. There there are this brand, that brand, all these different brands. What do you suggest? I'm Johnny Homeowner out there, and I want to go out and I want to purchase a semi-automatic handgun. You pulled out a Glock. What are your thoughts on brand? I would just say to anyone starting out looking for something, go with a reputable brand. Smith & Wesson, you know, Glock, Springfield, you know, brands like that's got a track history. There's going to be people out there that say, man, I hate a Glock. It's like holding on to a two-by-four. Man, chickens, we ain't pulling no guns out. You got, But anyway, you've got a uh, Glock. Feels like a two-by-four in my hand. But I, in my opinion, being in the military, being a police officer, Glock's the best combat handgun there is. I agree or disagree? I'm going to agree with you. That's my go-to brand for everything. I mean, Glock shoots. A Glock always shoots. If uh, you know you drop your Glock, whatever. A lot of people are going to say Glock doesn't have a safety. How do you address that issue with people? I mean, Glock doesn't have a safety. Well, Glocks actually have three safeties. Uh, one being the trigger itself. There's a bar on the trigger that uh, I could show you right here. That's clear. So the first one's going to be right here on the trigger. I'm pulling on the trigger and it won't fire. Once I depress this, then the trigger can fire. The other one's internally, inside the slide, so you actually have three safeties on a Glock. 
Okay, so the point, I guess, for the for the Glock would be, hey, if you drop it, it's it's already loaded and ready to go. You got one rack going in the chamber. If you drop it, it won't go off. But if you uh, if you rack it, slide it, get one in there, and, and you point, and you put your finger on that trigger, you don't have to manually reach up with your thumb and flip off or on a safety switch. Right. It's ready to go when you put your finger on the trigger. So basically, don't put your finger on the trigger unless you're ready to use it. Yep. They call so, it keeping your booger hook off the bank switch. Booger hook off the bank switch. I love it. So <laughs> that's awesome. That's the kind of stuff you're going to learn at Lima 3 Dynamics, man. No booger hook on the... All right. So now we're going to get into something else. Now I'm not Johnny Homeowner. I'm survival guy. I'm going to get some ammo, and I'm awaiting the apocalypse that happens when Donald Trump wins again or Joe Biden wins again. Whoever wins, something going to happen. Uh, groups, whatever, coming through town, whatever I might believe is going to happen. Maybe a tornado blows my house away. And so I need something to protect myself as I'm walking through the Badlands like Mad Max. What are you talking on that kind of stuff? I'll show you what I got. I'll show you what I got. I got a Savage 22, man. I got a Savage 22 with a scope on it that costs more than a rifle. So tell us about tell us about this 22, man. Now we'll clear that. It is clear. So tell us what you think about the 20. I got me a 22. What that 22 is going to be a little bit more versatile, such as survival and stuff. I can tell you right now, I don't want to be shot by a 22. Oh, so. I have had a lot of doctors tell me the same thing. Uh, this is one you don't want to get shot with, but as far as buying ammunition, man, it's easy to store a couple of yep. thousand rounds of 22. It's harder to store 20 or 2,000 rounds of uh, 223 or 308 or whatever. But uh, you, you also can't... carry a lot of rounds uh, for the weight yeah. of that ammunition. Much lighter in, in your bug out bag. And, uh, you know, the Survival 22s, hey, man, I had one. There's somewhere on my channel, there's a review that I had years ago. But that thing was hanging up on me pretty bad. I just got me a cheap old Savage, and it works all the time. Great for squirrels, small game, stuff like that. Hey, if you shoot something in the eye with it, it's going down. Deer, whatever. Yeah, that's why that 22 is going to be a very versatile for, you know, end of times type gun because you can hunt with it. You shoot a squirrel with a AK. 7.62, probably going to hey, have a lot of squirrel left. Probably going to skin it for you, man, yeah. and you won't even have to clean that squirrel. It's already gutted and skinned. You just get to nibble on the foot that's left. All right. So that's not what everybody came here to want to see. People came here and want to see the gun, gun man talk about cool guns, man. So what else have you brought? Apocalypse, Mad Max type stuff. Where are we going now? So the most popular sporting rifle in the United States is AR-15 in all its many different configurations. Okay. So this one right here is my personal one. And it's a BCM, that's Bravo Company Manufacturing. Uh, upper and lower, pieced them together, didn't buy it as one gun. And the first thing I put on it was a lot. Other than that, it's got some other, you know, it's got an aftermarket trigger, you know, something to help you work, work the bolt and an EOTech red dot sight. But the only thing you really need, if I said you, ne you needed a gun to just do all, go out, survive, whatever, is going to be a light and at least a set of iron sights. I'm old school and I like to fix fixed iron sights. A lot of guys now are going to the uh, low profile sights, but I'm just a little bit old school on that. Hey, the military's been, let me see that thing, man. The military's been using iron sights for years now. How much money you got in this thing, man? I couldn't tell you. A lot. Okay, so a lot of money in this thing. He's got all kinds of extra doodads and bells and whistles and all that stuff, you know. It's also got a high-speed paint job that he put on there. But if you'll notice, he's got uh, special little switches and all kinds of stuff that do cool things, man. So, uh, you know, Mad Max, you may very well want one of these things. I'm not sure, but what if... I, just a regular guy, I ain't going to go buy a lower and an upper because I don't know what the heck you're talking about, man. So what am I going to go get at the at the gun store or at the academy sports store? And I can walk in and say, hey, man, this is what I want. Give it to me. I got the money. Well, what uh, we use for rental rifles are Smith & Wesson m and 15. Uh, looks just like this rifle almost, just flat black. It's got a fixed front sight. 
uh, telescoping stock, and they just run. They're okay. they're around six hundred bucks or so, seven hundred. Six seven hundred bucks, and you get the iron sights and everything. If you want to put a light on it, you got to get that yep. separate. But basically, you get that. You put a thirty round magazine in it, and and you're ready to go. You're ready to go. The Smith and Wesson M and P. Is there another one out there that's a little cheaper that doesn't suck or that you can well, tell people about or not really? Anybody anybody can have good luck with guns, but uh, you know there's some cheaper brands such as like Anderson and stuff like that. And I've, they've had some quality control issues. Uh, is the one reason why I don't push those on anybody. But uh, you know you can always find used guns too. Don't be afraid to buy a used gun. I've okay. had several used guns, and a lot of times they're shot a little bit. And then put in the safe, so they have very little wear. Kind of like cheaper. Kind of like buying a used car. If you buy a used car, somebody drove the hell out of that car, man. But a used motorcycle? That's that. That's that cat that went and bought the motorcycle, and he drove about 110 miles on it. Said, "Boy, that's scary looking, man. Yep. I, just, I don't like it. So I'm gonna sell this." So guns are the same way, man. Yep. People, guns are like changing pants, man. There's people out there that'll buy a pair of pants, wear them for a year, and then never wear those pants again. Or some people may just wear them once. Guns are a lot the same way. I've gotten some good used guns. Now, you got some kind of monstrosity over there. Again, some kind of big bad boy. Let's take a look at this guy. Yes, uh, clear as well. Clear. Yep. So what do you call this guy, man? This is a AKM replica. Chambered in 7.62 by 39. Everybody's going to call it an AK-47. AK-47. So when I when I see bad dudes in movies, they're going to be shooting this thing, right? Nine times Some, out of ten. Sometimes good dudes in movies. They're going to either be shooting one of these or a Beretta. Now, back in the 80s, they were shooting the Uzis and stuff. But nowadays, they're going to be shooting one of these, and they're going to be shooting that big old long Beretta yeah. pistol. But uh, So what can this thing do? What, what is this thing better than something else for? Well, this has got this be a slightly better round to use if you're going to use it for like deer hunting and stuff like that. Just say, you know, uh, crap hits the fan. That 223 will kill a deer too, but you usually need you know a little bit better ammunition and stuff like that. Uh, this is also a heavier round, so it's going to go through a little bit like barriers and stuff like that a little better than a 5.56. So you're talking about through a windshield, windshields, walls, wall, yeah. stuff like that. Okay. Not saying that the five five six wouldn't do that, but this is just gonna be this just packs a little bit more punch. Okay, so now your your AR fifteen, your M four over there that we looked at before, that's got what kind of round? That's in five five six. That's a five five six. And this one is seven six two by thirty nine. Seven six two by thirty nine. Now the seven six two is the same round that they run in military weapons of different kinds, isn't it? And the two forty shoots a seven six two by fifty one. Okay, so a two forty machine gun basically shoots a very similar round of this. Now, from what I've heard about AK-47s is they'll shoot. It's kind of like a Glock, man. You, you throw it on the ground and kick dirt all over it, and it's going. you pick it up, it's going to shoot. Yeah, they're definitely a run. Modern, modern uh, AR-15s are a lot more reliable than where they got their reputation for jamming back in Vietnam when they first got filled. Right, the old M-16s. Uh, they call those the muskets these days. Yep. But, uh, uh, yeah, they had to be super clean back then. Yeah, they definitely uh, they definitely come a lot, a lot longer since then, but this AK is just usually going to run. not saying that it won't ever go down if you don't ever clean it or anything like that, but it's going to probably require a little bit less maintenance. You know, there's AKs out all over the world that's got, you know, shovel handles for stocks and stuff like that that they're just old they've been through the <laughs> ringer man <laughs> if you don't believe me look it up i want one i want one of those man i want one of those shovel guitars and i want a shovel handle m16 please nobody send me one but anyway so how much is something like this gonna run us man and can we buy it at academy or uh fred's guns or wherever yes you can uh given the current climate everything's a little bit harder to find as far as ar-15s and AKM pattern rifles like this, but this one's actually a rifle dynamics. You can order it online. It's custom built there for you, however you want it in uh, Las Vegas. Oh, um, you can go to Academy for sure. Your local pawn shop, you know, if somebody said you need a AK to go find right now that's in abundance, try to find yourself a Wasser 10. It's Romanian. Uh, I bought one 
for as low as 400 bucks before. Okay. So if anybody out there has questions about anything he's talking about, some things he's saying, you know, I'm going to go buy me a watch or whatever, you may not know exactly what he's talking about. I don't, but he does. Send us a comment. Click down there where I featured their video. Click down there where I featured their channel. Go to their channel. Send them a comment, man. Say, hey, what were you talking about on Crazy Dude with the Orange Hats video? Um, he can let you know all of the answers you need to know. So let's talk a little bit about what Lima 3 Dynamics does. Now, say my wife decides, hey, uh, we're prepping for the end of the world. We got us a, uh, we got us a garden. We got us some chickens. Uh, we're going to do this thing and that thing. Uh, I try to teach her how to shoot. I get all upset because, you know, it's difficult. I call Lima 3 Dynamics. What can you do for me? Well, one thing we do is we offer a woman's only course. Uh, a lot of times when you mix men and women in the same course, men kind of just naturally try to let their ego take over, and they, they don't pay attention as much. They're more worried about impressing the female students who don't really care, and it kind of takes away from the whole class. So we found that adding a female-only course really helps. Uh, it's definitely one of my favorite courses to teach because females actually will ask questions. Uh, they're interested to learn. Men kind of walk into a gun course. Kind of like how you walk in an auto body shop. Even if you don't know what you're talking about, you're going to try to, you know, be as I'm a man. Yeah. I've been shooting since last week, and I know everything. I read exactly. the book. I read the book and watched Rambo twice. But One we now. do offer, offer a course just for women in defensive carry, and it goes over a lot of things, such as uh, shooting from a car. We actually have actual automobiles out there that you can shoot through the windshield wow. and all that stuff. Uh and we spend a lot of time, all your reps are going to be drawn from whatever you're going to conceal from, from, whether it be your waistband, your purse, you know, whatever, that's what you're going to conceal and shoot from during that course. Wow, that's pretty awesome. And I'm, I'm going to say the same thing for the men's courses. Uh, is it going to be a run and gun type course, or am I just going to stand like the police academy and shoot? No, it, it really depends on the course you want to take. So we offer a uh, version one rifle and pistol course. You can bring both, or you can bring one. Whichever one you have. If you have both, bring them. But that course is going to really hit on the fundamentals. We're going to go over reloads, malfunctions, stuff like that. We're going to establish the building blocks on that course for you. And that one will be slightly static. So if that, okay. a lot of people think that doesn't sound like fun, I can promise you we do our best to you know, make it fun. We have competitions after we've established the fundamentals. Then moving on from that is version two, and that one will smoke you. That's a 100 meter, there's 100 meter sprints in there to get your heart rate up to show you, you know, just being able to pull the trigger is not good enough. Uh, your heart rate's up, you got to be accurate or you're just wasting that ammo. Yeah. So, uh, let's talk a little bit about, do y'all address like the philosophy? Anybody can buy a gun, anybody can train with a gun, but when it comes time to use a gun, whether that's for hunting or if somebody breaks into your house. I know everybody says the same thing. They're like, oh man, uh, I would have no problem squeezing that trigger if somebody broke into my house and was trying to harm me. But the last thing that a person needs is to pull that weapon and have somebody take it away from them. That's, that's a horrible day. So what, do y'all kind of address those types of situations, people that are new to guns, what it's actually going to be like to point and shoot at a target that that is breathing and looking back. Yep. We we offer a uh, in every class we talk about mentality, and uh, you know it goes back to like the men versus women thing. I'm more scared of women than I am men because a lot of women got that mama bear mentality. Yeah, they'll claw your eyes out if they have to. Hey, they don't need a gun. Don't even play with my wife. If you come into my house and my daughter's in there sleeping, bye. They won't even find you. <laughs> they won't find if they find a piece, they'll be lucky. They won't find you. I'm telling you. But we we definitely do talk about mentality. That's one thing we're lucky to have is uh, you know our instructors have some military background. They're not just they weren't mechanics or anything like that or supply. They were you know combat MOSs, uh, military occupational specialties. So you got no truck drivers out there, man? I sure don't. Oh man, now, not, I can not saying truck drivers can't shoot. But. I can remember working some ranges with this guy in the military. Do you remember the days that we would teach the cooks how to shoot rifles? Yes. <laughs> how were those days, man? They were pretty, pretty rough. They were rough, long, long days, days, man. Long days. You get a sunburn out there for sure. 
Yeah. I'm shooting my 50th time, but I'm, I'm going to get it this time, Sarge. No, one, right. one of the best is, you remember that soldier that come out there with the uh, shot forever? Shot probably 50 rounds. Turns out they didn't have a battery in their optic. Yeah. They were just putting the uh, putting out uh, there. He had the cool glasses on. And uh, you talking about the little skinny guy with the big, thick glasses? You talking about that dude? No, this is a female soldier. Oh, the one that I'm talking about shot all day. And I said, hey, man, I bet if I put a spatula in your hand, you can shoot and hit it. And he said, probably so. He said, I'm going to pull all this tape off of your sight, all this 100-mile-an-hour tape, and maybe you can see through this thing, man, so you can hit it. He was like, okay. I tear all the tape off, and he looks through it, and he could actually see, but he still couldn't shoot, man. So I, I don't know what happened to that guy. He's probably still pancaking it up somewhere. He's probably a sergeant major now. Also... We would spend our hard days, we were working so hard on ranges, teaching these guys how to shoot, and then we would walk two miles to the chow line, get in the chow line, we would walk up, and I literally saw this. He hands his plate out to the cook, and the cook pulls out a spoon, and goes to put it in there, and then he pulls it back, and takes half the spoon and puts it on <laughs> this dude's plate. <laughs> nope, that's all you get. <laughs> That's the true, true story, story, man. That's military for you, man. I love it. Uh, something else I was going to ask you about. Uh, what type, how much money are we looking at for a course? Like, uh, say the women's only course. What's that going to cost me? How many hours is it for the day? Well, we've, uh, our courses are usually about 160 bucks okay. per person. And we offer military and law enforcement discounts as long as fire and EMS. Okay. And uh, you also get a discount if you bring somebody else with you and register together. Cool. So uh, you're looking at the, the round count. We always fluctuate it between, you know, this and that. Because if you want to shoot more, you can. Or, you know, Just if you need standard. more, we'll have ammo there. You know, we don't want anybody to leave not being able to, you know, feel like they learned something and got their money's worth. Right. And that's a big thing because, you know, I'm not made out of money. And if I'm going to pay money to go to a course, I would definitely want to feel like I'm going to get, you know. Hey, we're making a video on a chicken shack, so it's obvious. That should tell you something. We're not made of money. <laughs> but anyway, hey, man, at least we got some chickens back here. We'll have some eggs later. Um, we, you were talking about females earlier. Uh, I got to say, from teaching survival classes, Women are tough, man, and I'm not taking anything away from men because I'm a man, but i got to tell you, man, women won't stop. Women are tough, man, so I know what you're talking about on, on the, the female thing, man. I, I do some stuff, and the guys would be like, I, I don't want to do that. I'm like, you paid for a survival class, man. What do you mean you don't want to do this? It's going to suck, man. you got to embrace the suck. They would say, I don't want to do that, but the women would always do it. While the husband sat in the car. I don't understand, but women are tough, man. If it was up to men to have babies, we'd all be gone now. Oh, we'd yeah. be extinct. So That's that's a big thing about the female-only courses. You know, if you've ever tried teaching your wife or girlfriend, or if you're a female and you tried to have your boyfriend or husband teach you, you're already sick of him anyways. You don't want to listen to him gripe at you about how to hold it or you're doing it wrong and exactly. all that. So it's good to just have a fresh face, somebody you don't really know, and, you know, We've stayed at courses before we had to turn headlights on just so we could see the targets because we don't want you to leave if you don't feel confident. So a lot of people, I know a lot of people in the survival community, hey, I need you to come teach a course to these guys. Hey, can you come teach a course to these guys? And all these guys talk about the same thing. I'm stockpiling weapons and I'm stockpiling ammunition. I've got X number of umpteen thousand rounds I got so many rifles and this and that. I, I don't understand it completely. I mean, I, I get it. You buy a pistol, you buy a 22 rifle, maybe you buy an M4 to protect your property. But a lot of the people, and, and I want to touch on this because I think it's important for all of us to understand. A lot of people are stockpiling because they say they're not going to take my weapons from me. And they may not take their weapons from me. And I don't want to get on anybody's bad side politically or anything else. But I want to tell you, former staff sergeant, I go up to your house with a clipboard and I say, I'm going to need to take all your weapons that you have on this list. And you tell me, no, I'm a clipboard guy, I'm going to go away. What's coming next? 
is probably an up armored Humvee with a dude on top with a 240 machine gun. And, and you go look out the back door and there's some more out there. So basically, you know, what does the military fight? 10 to 1 odds? The army fights 10 to 1 odds? 3 to 1. 3 to 1. 3 to 1 odds. So if you got three people in your house, they're going to bring nine at least. Uh, so that's the way our military wins. We win by fighting the correct odds. And uh, you, you could shoot, but man, they could shoot all day. When you go to a range in the military, how many rounds do they bring out you guys shoot? Thousands. 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 Upon, whatever you got stockpile, they blew through that uh, in a day. On a Saturday. On a Saturday. Teaching cooks how to shoot. Cooks. So if the cook shows up at your house, man, do not, please do not. I, it, it's not going to happen here, but please don't. Like point a gun at some army dude or some police officer that comes to your house. I know I'm going to get on some people's bad sides and I'm going to get hit with some comments, but I'm telling you from a guy who knows, don't point a gun at those types of people, man. Because if you do, you're asking for something that you can't, you can't give up. You can't give it back, man. Your family's in that house. Do you agree or disagree with that? Now, you're the gun man and you do all of the tactical shooting and stuff. Do you agree or disagree with that statement? I can agree with you that I'm not going to try to take on the local police department or military unit. Yeah, uh, and that's just me. So, tactical shooting for defense. Uh, that's what you guys do. You you also do just plain Jane. Hey, you know, I don't have to learn how to tactical shoot. I need to shoot a dude from a car or across my bedroom. But as far as the tactical shooting goes... Where that comes into play is when you've got angry mobs, when you've got people, uh, you know, 50 people breaking down your storefront uh, windows and taking all of the stuff that you've purchased with your money and they, they run out because they're angry because somebody got elected or not elected. I think that's where the tactical style shooting comes into play with an M4 or an AK or something like that, you know. Don't don't buy one of these and go out and pick a fight with, with local law enforcement or military or whatever because, you know, even the reserve is going to get you, man, because they just, they, they've got too much to overpower. But I'm talking angry mobs and stuff. I think that's where you're going with all that kind of stuff. So if you need a class, if you're close to Arkansas, even if you ain't close to Arkansas and you decide, hey, I want one of those classes and I'm from California, the classes out here cost 2000 bucks. This dude's charging 160 Drive out, buy a plane ticket, whatever. Come see the guys. Social distance. They'll wear a mask. You can wear a mask. Everybody will be on the safe side. But come see the guys at Lima 3 Dynamics. Click down there, subscribe for me, like for me, whatever. I know this video has run long, but I wanted to get Aaron in here and tell you what he knows about guns. Any parting thoughts, man? Any parting Not thoughts it. on tactical style, anything, what you should have? So, for me, I guess that's all I've got on the gun subject. Uh, we'll get Aaron back out here. We'll talk about some more stuff later on. Maybe we'll go through... Uh, a range course with him and watch him and his guys run and gun. I would love to do that. If you want to see it, you can see it on their video. It's featured down there with their channel. So, for now, and like I say, sorry this thing ran long, but if you want to know about guns, watch the video, man. You can watch 30 minutes of The Simpsons, but they're not going to tell you about an AK-47. So anyway, it's Kelly with BC Tactical and Survival, and... It's Aaron with Lima 3 Dynamics. We really appreciate you watching, and we hope to see you again soon. So stay tuned, YouTube.